and uh, we will be seeing Pavelski and Munir in our first set. Pavelski sponsored by Kingdom, obviously. Munir seemingly no sponsor. Munir on the Dusk. Now, the Dusk and Spear had a pretty big buff. Uh... Uh, in the patch notes, it said that they gave, you know, an increase in the hitbox, and I remember when people actually checked it out in the game, they were like, guys, this is not okay, what did you do to Dusk? So I'm not sure if that way, you know, has any weight in the consideration for Munir to pick this legend here. I don't know, man. Dusk is not a legend you see too often. I know, uh, I know a certain guy that's probably rejoicing quite a lot right now, you know him too. Uh, but... I'm looking at it, it's not just Dusk, it's Nimue, a crossover we barely ever see, and right now, it is not looking like it's working out too well, but Nimue, where is that from again? Was that... What's that the crossover from? I forgot. I, I have no idea, I'm going to be completely honest. I, I don't keep track of any crossovers other than... other than chun Lee and like the Kung Fu Panda ones. I know literally none of them. <laughs> I think it was Hellboy, actually. But now, moving on to the match, we have Pavelski versus Munir. What are you thinking for the matchup between these two players here? So far, Pavelski is looking incredibly solid. Uh, that was a very, very good wake-up coming out from Munir, though. Uh, so far, Munir, I actually didn't pay way too much attention on what weapons they, they, they were favoring in the first stock. They were on the spear, now swapping over to the orb, maybe trying to look for some of this damage buildup, or potentially sacrificing that orb, uh, knowing that he would go down soon so he can get the spear in his hands again. Pavelski full stock lead. It's looking really rough for Munir. Pavelski is looking so smooth right now. You just see the movement, the reads by him, the offstage where he's so confident about. Pavelski just a menace on the gauntlets, and Munir trying to catch his ground here right now, just trying to get that stage control, force Pavelski into a bad situation, catch up on that one stock lead that he has, but Pavelski is just moving around him, and you can really see it. Yeah, he's moving super well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please don't get me wrong. I love Pavelski as much as... I, lo I love just Pavelski just as, just as much as the next man, but... Pavelski, let's just say, is known for uh, potentially, hypothetically, sometimes having some inconsistencies with his placements. So to any Munir believers out there, I mean, Munir definitely possesses the skill set to take Pavelski down here. But so far, uh, it, it is looking extremely grim. Pavelski is giving him a very hard time. Now, so far, we're looking at a situation where Munir could go down any moment, and he does right there with that insanely placed unarmed stare. I do believe in the next match, we will be seeing a character switch from Munir, as I know him for Sword Legends. I saw him in the story recently, I saw him on the Tori, and now he's locking in the Jayun. I do believe Munir's go-to weapon and Munir's comfort weapon is the sword, which I think might be a bit more comfortable for him to play into the gauntlets than the Nimue. Uh, Munir doesn't fill out uh, his uh, legend selection too much on start.gg. Uh, shame on him. <laughs> so I'm not. We're not really too sure on like pure statistics. Uh, but yeah, I think you're completely right. I believe the times that I have seen Munir play, it's usually been on that sword. I think he played that Bodvar quite a lot before the hammer got nerfed. I see that some people in the chat uh, are people that know Munir, so maybe they're gonna be able to provide some extra insights. Uh, regardless, I think that Mooner, you know, he probably has a couple of tricks up his sleeve, whereas Pavelski, I would be surprised if he, if he swaps off the Mordex at all this set. Probably not. If he switches, it's got to be to another Gauntlet Legend, and I don't think he will switch unless Mooner just starts dominating here right now. And we are seeing Mooner on the Jayun. What do you think about Greatsword right now? I'm not really sure. Super, it's, it's super hard to tell what's going on right now. Munir so far, keeping it super even and competitive, but super, super hard to predict anything that's happening here. Now, what I'm seeing so far is they keep going for those offstage engagements. Munir sticking to the sword a bit more than the greatsword, seemingly. Now going for the greatsword on the edge guard, seemingly very that's strong clear. at doing so with the reverse neutral stick. And he does get the finish there. First time Munir takes the lead in the set. And so far, we've been looking at an entirely different game than the first one, where Pavelski seemingly just dominated Munir and he could not get a break. But now we're seeing Munir up front, 
looking quite strong, taking that stage control. Pavelski struggling to get back. And the, st the great sword edge guards just seemingly are so good. Pavelski was able to take out that stock pretty efficiently, but we were, what we were seeing right there, as you were uh, talking about, the great sword. I love how the moment Munir got any kind of like ground on Pavelski, it's like Munir got a very small lead by getting that first KO. He has the great sword in hand, and he's like, All right, if you give if you give me an inch, I'm gonna take an entire mile. He runs in with that great sword. He's swinging it all over the place. He does not want to chill out. As soon as as soon as he gets a little bit of a lead, he's gonna start going in harder, which is a mentality that's been wor that's working super well so for him so far. Full stock lead on the board. For sure, and we're looking at a complete mirror, at a complete reverse from game one. Right now, Munir almost a full stock ahead. Pavelski just catching some stage control here right now, trying to take Munir off stage. Not quite working out there, but I do believe if Munir does not get rid of the greatsword there, he will not survive off stage, which he does, and he does go back with the unarmed. Honestly, out of personal experience, if you are off stage with greatsword and you're trying to recover back, that usually does not end too well because of how slow the offstage optional and greatsword are that actually do put you back up in the air. And right now, Pavelski getting a bit more damage, but Munir going down to the last stock. It's looking fairly even now with Pavelski being slightly behind damage-wise, and Munir does have the sword stacked up next, I believe. Now, I'm starting to get a little bit worried for Pavelski here. I, I don't know what you were seeing, but that last stock, Pavelski was hunting and fishing for those KOs just a little bit too much, and Mooner is really starting to get into Pavelski's head here. This is looking like it's Mooner o'clock. I'm thinking, right? These two players have to have gone up against each other and ranked multiple times, and it is now 1v1, uh, 1 to 1, and they just probably are switching around on the character switches and i am seeing now in the map bands that pavalski is now also on the jayun this is what he won the bcx world championship in 2020 with the great sword and we're seeing a great sword mirror now which in 2023 i believe is fairly rare Three, two, one, yeah brawl. very very long time ago since we saw a jayun mirror i'm pretty sure i haven't seen this since that tournament i'm not going to be saying specifically which one or which patch it's like voldemort nobody wants to be reminded but you know which one i mean you know exactly which one i mean there was this one tournament where there was you know a high density of of jayun players that's probably the first and the last time i saw a, a jayun mirror i don't know about you that could very well be and now looking at this game three between munir and pavelski on the jayun mirror so far it's looking like pavelski's look uh, is a little bit ahead, but they're looking at more of a sword mirror right now, which they have not played the great sword into each other too much. Pavelski now locking that in, and I'm thinking Pavelski may have won the world championship with the great sword, but I do not know. I don't watch too many Pavelski streams. Has he been practicing the great sword at all recently, or does he even need to? I'm not sure, actually. I, I was under the impression that Pavelski has not been practicing that much recently, as he's been trying out some other games and focusing on content creation. I could be completely wrong. I don't watch too much of the Pavelski content. Uh, either way, Pavelski is doing a super good job so far. He will get knocked out by a great combo coming out from Mooner. Uh, so far, I do want to say, Mooner's greatsword like severely outweighs his sword so far. Whenever Munir is on the great sword, that's like, I, I'm in a 100 damage lead. He goes on sword, that's when Pavelski strikes and that's when he starts catching back up. For sure. And so far this great sword mirror is something I haven't seen in quite a long time. And Pavelski just seemingly seems more comfortable at taking out those blows, switching out those blows, which probably he has quite a lot of experience in considering he won the bcx 2020 in the mirror match and ever since i don't believe he has gotten too much experience with it but that is just muscle memory that stays ingrained in you which he uh which seemingly stays but the great sword into sword does not work out too well for him right now which is the main reason Munir has made comebacks so far the great sword into great sword goes into pavelski's favor and then Munir picks up the sword which he just seemingly is so strong on and it's just so good 
Munir may be starting to get a little bit of a nervous right now. You see him flailing his great sword around a little, a little more than usual. Pavelski is able to catch these punishes. Super good combo. Weapon throw coming out. Tries to go for the edge guard, but Munir will be able to get it back with a unarmed dare, giving him time to pick up the weapon too. That was clutch by Munir, but not clutch enough. Pavelski is going to be able to get the stock off regardless. Now, I believe we switched it back that it's best of five in the entire top eight now and not in top four. So, yes, we will be seeing them go into game four here. And Munir is picking up the Asiri that I mentioned at the start when I was talking about Munir. I recently saw him play this and Munir was looking nasty on the Qatar. So I think we might be seeing a game five here if he plays like I know he can. It's definitely possible. I saw someone earlier in the chat uh, uh, asking where Munir is from. Uh, Munir is from the Netherlands and Pavelski is from Bulgaria, to anyone that didn't know. Munir on the Asuri. Adi, what are, what, what are we thinking? So, I recently saw Munir in a clan battle uh, between my clan and his clan, and he was looking absolutely insane. The Katars, he just kept getting dodge read after dodge read, just kept it going. The flow was insane. The strings were crazy. And obviously the sword, his comfort weapon, just looked so, so good. What? And right now he's what? throwing that. Are you seeing oh, this? He's just pulling Those combos? Mooder is keeping to... it funky fresh, dude. The GC D like ground pound trying to tie it in with the Sayer. But the thing is, I mean, okay. You, you, you see, Mooner steps it up, he starts getting a little bit funky, he starts experimenting a little. Uh, the thing he doesn't realize is that you are starting to play Pavelski's game. Like, you immediately saw Pavelski being like, oh, so you want to do this? And then he just started doing the exact same thing, but like 1.5 times better. Yeah, at the start he was trying to get those openers and Munir was just uh, focusing on punishing them and just trying to poke them out a little bit with the spacing. But then Pavelski immediately adapted and just figured that out. So now he's playing way better and now Munir is switching over to the guitars because he figured out Pavelski is adapting, but it's not working out so far. That was quite the quick exchange. Pavelski with the amazing great sword string right there and now full stock ahead, Munir is probably going to look for the guitars again. Looking for, and uh, you were talking about the Qatars. We haven't seen Munir too much on them, and what is that offstage ah! action? Pavelski will no! go off the top! My heart was racing. I thought for sure Munir had it in the bag. He went absolutely crazy. I'm at, a, I'm at a loss for words. I'm at a loss for words, Sadi. I am too, and honestly, you heard me screaming no there. I, I put Munir in my top three, and I don't like where this is going. He is this just is... now gone down to loser's bracket. If you didn't know, this was winner side, and we will be seeing one more winner side set after this.